which is which is basically the unseen state of the realms of the departed spirits. This is the Hebrew word, and we will look at the Old Testament. Now, the Greek word for the word Hades is equivalent to this Hebrew word. This is this is the word hell we'll look for in the Old Testament, or when the Greek word Hades is mentioned. Now, you know a lot of us house slaves talk about Gehenna, Hades, soul, you know, I see all they call this, you know. But basically, all it talks about is hell. This is the place. Now, now, this is basically what it is. Words grow in meaning. And of course, now today, uh, the word Gehenna is, is being used. It's also another Greek word. But it also talks about, not only just for everybody, it talks about especially for the unsaved, departed into that place that we would call hell. And the Bible talks about in, in um, the Greek word Gehenna will cover the, the, that part where it's talking about the unsaved people will go into this place called hell. So basically, it's all there in the Bible. But I'm just showing you the root of the word. It's there. It's called in Hebrew. Soul is called uh, in the Greek uh, Gehenna, or it's called uh, um, Hades. These are basically the words that we use. And I'll tell you, it's good to see that we can understand it better. Of course, we, we see other definitions of the furnace fire, the fire is, with furnace, the fire that doesn't go out, the unquenchable fire where the worm doesn't die. All this refers to the same place called hell. Now, of course, hell and the lake of fire are, of course, two different instances that we're talking about. But right now, we're just looking at that particular word, hell. And really, I'll tell you, the first customer, or the first person that's going to wind up, or, or will be in hell, or is in hell, let me use the proper term, Satan will inhabit hell forever. The old devil, Satan himself, he's there. He's there in hell. Revelation 20.10. If you turn with me to Revelation 20.10, let's just take a little, little, little things that we have in. I'd like to just try to back up if I say the devil will be in hell. You may turn around and say, no, he's not. He's here in my house. You may say, oh, he's right around here. Oh, he has a lot of embassies, you know. He has a lot of ambassadors, you know. But he himself is in hell. And basically, uh, that's what I'd like to show. 2010, we talk about the book of Revelation. It talks about things that didn't happen yet. But it talks about 27. Let me, let me just say, show it to you. And this is what God is saying. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Lake of fire, which is another rendition of the word hell, although it does talk about another event here. But yet God is saying at the end of time that the devil will be cast into, into hell. From hell we'll go into the lake of fire. That's his domain. It's where he's going, you know. But of course, if you look into Isaiah, 14. Turn with me to Isaiah. This is one of the one of the wonderful passages, you know, that talks about oh Lucifer. Isaiah 7, uh, 14, 9. 14, 9. It's not, you don't see too much about Lucifer in the Old Testament. You see his works, what he's doing all the time. But it seems like we have something here that God must be put, uh, pulling back the curtains a little bit. We can look at Isaiah 14, 9. Look what it says right here. 14, 9 down to verse 17. It's basically talking of a person of persons. 14, 9. Hell from beneath is moved from thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirred up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It had risen up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? As art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave in the noise of thy vows. The worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. Now, verse 12 down, it just shows, talks of, of a particular person. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Happens to be one of the devil's many names. Son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? But thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the side of the pit. They that see thee shall now they look upon thee, and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake, have, uh, shake kingdoms? that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened and not the house of his, of his prisoners. Then he goes a little bit more. But who is he talking about? God is saying that he's going to cast Lucifer, the old devil, the serpent. He's going to cast him into hell. In fact, it is. I believe he's there. No, because hell is, is any place other than heaven, as we would understand it. So 
The Satan will inhabit hell forever. That's his place. He's an outcast. He's outcast from heaven right now. I seem to think he, that because how, how I, you know, when I study the scriptures, Luke 10, 18, it seems that when Jesus is looked up in heaven, when he sends his the multitude out, Jesus has something to say. Luke 10, 18. People can say this might be of a future event, but I kind of take it that it could be a, a present or, or maybe uh, something of a event. But let's, let me see, let's see how you take this. Luke 10, 18. Look at what it says. I can't find chapter 10. Okay, one more page. Okay, one Use my new Bible here, and it's hard when you turn the pages. Look, 10, 18. Now Jesus sends out his disciples and his his, his followers, and, and the 70, you know, 72. He sends out by 70, two by two, you know, 72 of them. And then when they come back, Jesus said in verse 18 of Luke 10, look what Jesus says. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fallen from heaven. You see, Jesus is making that, then he, then he talks about, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and all that. So, no, nobody ever had this power before, you know, of, of a mass group of people. And Jesus says, Yes, as you went out and you were casting out strongholds and all that, I was watching and Satan is cast out of heaven. I saw it, and you were out there telling the good news. I saw the devil just thrown out of heaven. As if the doors of heaven are shut, and the devil is just kicked out of heaven. And so we understand that the devil is, I say first, but I would say, He's in hell. That's his place. And you know, that's, of course, Ephesians 2 2 also mentioned that, 1 Peter 5 8. Only going through heaven to accuse the Christians. That's his job now, say. He wants to accuse the, the brothers who love Jesus, Job 1 6. He's right there, he sneaks up in the line, and he's up Even though, even though Jesus says he's cast out, it seems like, you know, back, you know before, you know, if, if Jesus talked about present, future incident, it seemed like the old devil used to go there and accuse the brethren. You know, old Job, you know, all the nice little things he was doing. And yet the old devil said, ah, he's doing it because you're always giving him uh, blessings and all of that. But if you took away the heads away from him, oh, I can get him to curse you to your face. You know, we know the story already. And uh, John, God said, okay, let's let there be a contest. And we see how faithful Job was. Even though, I mean, even though he was squashed, he came up again. And so we see the devil's the old accuser. So he was accusing. So he had a chance to walk into heaven. But now Jesus says, he's cast out. I saw him come down. I saw him go out of heaven because Jesus wants to cross a car for your sins and mine. And he did that to destroy the works of the devil. That's his only reason, Jesus. He did that so that we can go to heaven. We don't have to go to hell. In the great tribulation, a great war will come into heaven, and, and then Satan will be cast out for the last time. The great war, the uh, pastor uh, is preaching about Revelation, where he's talking about the great woes and all that. The war will happen in heaven, and when that happens, that's the last time he's going to be kicked out of heaven, and then he's going to be coming down here for a little while. That's what he's talking about Revelation 12, 7. Satan is destined for hell. That's where, he's, that's where he is, and that's where he comes out and pops his ugly head, and that's where he lives, and that's where everything else. And I tell you, he wants more people to go down there more and more, because I tell you, he misery likes company. And that's why he wants more people to get down there with him, because he knows if you don't make it to heaven, you have to go to another place called hell. There's no other place called hell. So I would be careful if I were you about sending somebody to hell. People often say, you know, they get a little mad, a little frustrated. I know, I, I hear, I used to do it myself. You know, you hear people when you're working with, maybe we sanctimonious, you know, that we don't say this too often, you know, because now we say that we're among Christian folks and all that. But, you know, you heard people say when they get mad, go to hell. I'd like to I like caution you from that one. If you get mad or you hear somebody say that, remember this little thing I'm talking about, Satan's down there. Would you really want somebody to go to hell? Or if you hear somebody else tell somebody else to go to hell, why don't you correct them by saying, no, don't go to hell, go to heaven. <laughs> I tell you, you're, you're, you're blown in mind, you know. So <laughs> you're, you're, you're in school or at your job or whatever, or home, you hear somebody get mad, somebody say, why don't you go to hell and all that? You want to correct them and say, no, no. But the Phil said, don't send them to hell, send them to heaven. <laughs> because, you know, it's easier to say, go to heaven. I know it's harder to say the word heaven than hell, and all that. It seems to be a byword word and all that. But I'll tell you, think about it. We don't want to send nobody to hell, do we? Amen? Anybody want to go to hell here? I'm sure if you thought about it, you want to go, because all Lucifer is down there. But that's not all. Lucifer is not the only one. The fallen angels will inhabit hell forever. Second Peter 2 4. Tell me, Second Peter 2 4. I'm going to do a little bit of gymnastics. Like I said, Second Peter 2 4. Second Peter 2 4 talks about the old fallen angels. You know what they are. Those are the 
you know, and I, and I worry about people who say, oh, you're an angel, you know. I often say to them, yeah, what kind of angel? There's two kinds of angels. The Bible talks about the good ones and the bad ones, you know. So I often wonder, and I'm sure if you use that expression, you know, us married folks with kids, we often say, oh, he's an angel, she's an angel, you know. I often think in my mind, I'm sure they're talking about the good ones. You know, nobody wants to think about the bad fallen angels, but but Second Peter 2, 4 does talk about the bad fallen angels. It seems something happened. And verse 4 tells us, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into change of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and then it goes out, And spared not the old world, but saved no one, a person, the preacher of righteousness, bringing to in, Bring it in the flood upon the world of Galilee, and then it talks about and delivered uh, Sol- and, and, and turned Solomon and Gomorrah. I'm just, I'm just jumping down a little bit and delivered a just lot. And then it talks about if God did all this, what does God have in store later on? I mean, it talks about it right here, but verse 4 does talk about in God spared not the angels. It appears to me that not only is Lucifer, old Satan himself in hell, but the fallen angels will, in heaven, will, will be living in hell forever. How hideous will the company in hell really be? It's going to be quite hideous. You don't even know. You don't even know. And, and of course, a lot of people, you know, they talk about it. Because really, people just say, I don't believe in it. You don't got to believe in it. A lot of people are going to be going to hell anyway. What would you do? when you're in hell and Satan is on one side and the fallen angels or demons on the other side of hell, I tell you, it's a horrible place to be. None of us want to go, none of us want to send anybody, but yet so we, we use this as, 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 as something. Well, this is an opportunity now to see just what hell's all about. I tell you, when Jesus came down, he didn't come down to be an angel. The Bible says he took on himself flesh, human flesh. He became man. That's why the Bible, that's what we say, Jesus is perfect God and perfect man. He was always God, Jesus, and yet, a point in time in history, Jesus came down and he put on flesh and he, and he lived the perfect life, as you and I would understand this. All through the Old Testament, there was always pictures of Christ coming down, Christophanies they call it, where Jesus always came to make special appearances, but he always took an adult form. But the Bible says in the fullness of time he came, he was born of Mary, and then he came into this world as a babe and he lived the perfect life, Jesus, become the second Adam to redeem mankind. And I tell you, the angels are furious. Because he didn't redeem the angels. The Bible says that Jesus redeemed mankind. And I'll tell you, if we have anybody who is against us, not only is Lucifer against the Christians, born against Christians, but the fallen angels are also mad, they're fiery mad, because there's no redemption for them. Second Peter 2 4 says that when they sin, God just switched them off, and now they're in hell, or they're, or they're destined for hell as well, because that's where their state, and they have change on them. You know, invisible change, we would understand it, but we're talking about a different dimension. You know, we can't see them with our naked eye, but yet when God opens your eye, you, you know, as God did in the Old Testament, if God can open our eyes to, to see the spiritual things, then we can see the spiritual warfare up in heaven, the spiritual warfare around, and there's also devils in hell, and I say devils, I'm talking about the angels, you know, the fallen angels in hell as well. I tell you, it's a horrible place, and this is the company that there seems to be. Now, not only that, a third little thing is the beast, or the common world dictator, who, which is probably on the scene already. He just hasn't made himself uh, known yet. And, and the world dictator and his false prophet will be cast into hell to be punished forever. He's also coming. Also, the world dictator and his false prophet will be cast into hell. The world ruler will bring abomination of desolation. This would, you know, as Pastor was making that study in Revelation, I'll tell you, it's interesting to see that when he comes, and he could very well be here, he's going to be cast into the lake of fire as well. I'll tell you, it's a horrible, if you look at it, all who take the mark of the beast will be, will inhabit hell forever, Revelation 4, 9. Remember that little, you know, thing that we're talking about, the 666, you know, the number? And I'll tell you, people joke about this, you know, whether it be the mark on the right hand or on the forehead, we even see those movies about the mark of the beast and all, but I'll tell you, who will take the mark of the beast? Back in the tribulation, as we go, as the tribulation will be coming upon us, because we understand the rapture will come first, and we're going to be out of this, but the Bible does talk about anybody who takes the mark of the beast will also would have to inhabit hell forever. Revelation 14. Tell me, Revelation 14, 9, you can see. So you don't think I'm making this up. 14, 9. I'll give you a chance to turn to Revelation 14, 9. Okay, you got it? 14, 9. And the third angel, and the third angel followed him, saying with a loud voice, "If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark, 
in his right forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb. And then it goes on, and the smoke of their torment is sent up forever and ever, and they shall have no rest day and night, nor who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his hand. Talks about who's going to receive the mark of the beast, which is that 666 which either that you know about, or you've heard about, or you hear about all the time. Well, anybody who gets that mark during the tribulation is also going to be going to hell as well. I tell you, it's, it's a thought to keep in mind. Judas, I carry it. Now, let's talk about some particular person here. Judas, Judas, you know, who betrayed the Lord. He'll be in hell forever. So it seems to indicate John 6, 64. Tell me, John 6, 64, talked about this particular uh, thing here. 6, 64. Jesus is talking uh, uh, for future instance of Jesus saying, John 6, 64, that there are some of you that believe not. He's talking to Jesus. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. He's talking of a particular person here. He's talking about other people who will not believe later on. But he's talking, and Jesus is talking to his disciples. He's saying, well, there are some people who, don't, who won't believe. We understand that Judas... Acts 125 talks about he bought as himself a plot of land. You know, he, 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 he's, he's headed for hell, as we would say, because he turned and he turned his back. Now, Judas, of all people, was a preacher. You may not realize that. You may not think of it, but he was an actual preacher. He was chosen of the Lord. He walked with Jesus. He ate with the Lord. He slept alongside of him for three and a half years. He known all the plan of salvation. God even empowered him to go out and cast out demons and all that. And yet he was already in love. As you would understand, he didn't believe. He didn't turn his heart over. Maybe some folks here will go to church all the time. You know the plan of salvation. You know what's to be done. You don't want to do it. You know all that. You know, just because you go to church, it don't save you. Just because your parents are saved, they don't make you saved. But the point is, everybody has to come to that point in their life. And Judas, I carry it, is one person, as I can understand, and it's a, it's a frightening thing if you think about it. He had all the opportunities, all the, all the, he saw Jesus, and yet, the Bible says, he even bought himself a plot. And, and I tell you, it's a frightful thing if you think about it. A terrible woe, 20, Matthew 26, 24. Let's just, let's just see, 26, 24. Let's just see something here. Jesus is talking about this. 26, 24. Jesus is talking again of that particular person. Let's start, uh, Matthew 26, 24. The Son of Man go as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. You see that? It had been it would have been better if I if I have the right translation. It, it would have been better if that man had not even been born. It would have been better. Because Jesus says he has all the opportunities, yet he blew it. I tell you, it's right it's right that Judas is Judas is, is also in hell. And you hear that old expression, Judas goes. You, you, you ever heard that question? Judas go. That's usually the same idea. When Judas was betrayed, he took a whole bunch of uh, little crooks, you know, the Roman guards and all that. And he took them into the garden, and then he betrayed them all with a kiss. The Italians use that all the time, the kiss of death and all that. But the, you know, Judas, uh, Judas go. You know, people use that expression. It's when you lead somebody or you lead something into something else. I tell you, people often use that expression even today. And I'm sure old Judas, I'm sure he's burning in hell enough and he's suffering enough. And then he has to know that people even use his name even today by using that expression, the Judas go, which you're you're betraying somebody or you're betraying something else. It's frightening to think about it. But let's just go on a little bit. I'm, I'm trying to wrap it all up. The unconverted Gentiles, anybody who's not born again, who remain alive with judgment when Jesus returns to reign on the earth will be sent right into hell. Anybody who hasn't received uh, the Lord into the heart, of course the Bible talks about the end of the world, but the, actually the more better translation will be the end of this age. This is what he's talking about. All those unconverted Gentiles who have it, who are here, who will be around and they don't receive the Lord, they're all going to be going to hell. I tell you, hell is going to be filling up. And we would understand. And we'd look back until we look today, I tell you, more and more people. And hell, the Bible talks about it's like a tape word, opening high and big and big, and more souls are going into hell. I remember the question was always brought, uh, how many, uh, you know, because, you know, we're talking about spirits, we're talking about, you know, the part of spirits and all that. We talk about this, so people often say, well, hell will be too crowded. You know, well, because it says it's always seems to be getting bigger and bigger. 
and then they all argue with each other back. How many, uh, how many uh, uh, angels? You know, this is the, you know uh, the good or bad angels. How many can sit on the head of a pin? You know, because they, oh, oh, how many angels can be in this room? You know, we 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 fill this room up. You know, uh, when we're here, because we take up space, but angels don't take up space. So, you know, remember that guy who Jesus cast, cast out 7,000 uh, spirits? His name was Legend, and he, uh, uh, Legion, and anything of a Legion, in those days meant five or 7,000 uh, troops. And, and as he said, my name is Legion, but there are many of us. There's 5,000 or 7,000 spirits inside that person. I tell you, it's a frightful thought to see that all this is going to be going into hell and all that. I tell you, it's just a thought. Keep it, in, keep it back in your mind. People joke about it, nothing to joke about. It. And then murderers. This is, uh, we're going to see this in Revelation 21 8. Murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, as well as unbelievers shall have their part in the lake of fire. Tell me in Revelation 21 8. You'll see this. 21 8, Revelation. I know it's a little object. Usually I don't like doing this. I like to have all my scripture at the beginning, but it doesn't always work out that way. Revelation 21 8. Look what it says. But the fearful and unbelieving and, uh, and the abominable and the murderers and who are mongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burned with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. This is called the second death. Place God has prepared for the ones who want to follow the devil. This is what God has prepared. And the last little thing I have here, all who have not identified, who have not definitely had their names written in the Lamb's Book of Life, must inhabit hell forever. Anybody else whose name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, the Bible says, also has to go to hell. Right there, don't turn, don't turn from it. Revelation 20.15. This is the last little thing I have here, my last little point. Revelation 20.15, look what it says right here. And whosoever was not found written in the book or the Lamb's Book of Life was cast into the lake of fire. You see, the day I accepted Jesus in my heart, the Bible says that the angel is written in my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. The day that you accepted Jesus into your heart, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Praise be to God. We won't have to worry about this horrible place that God has already prepared. He's made it. It's already there. These people I mentioned, most of them are here, are all there. In fact, I think all of them are there, although we're talking about future things, about the tribulation period and all that. Listen, this is the, the, the most horrible thing. Romans 3.22 and 3.23 talks about all, the whole world. If uh, we talk about the wicked, in some sense, that means the whole human race. We're talking about everybody right there. And you know, I had this little story about Hitler. And, and I'll tell you, it's a true story, because we all know who Hitler was, you know. We look at him and say he was an animal. He was horrible. But if you not, do you know? But he thought he was pretty nice. He thought he was pretty good. He had millions and millions of people thought he was a god or something of that sort. And he had people following him and worshiping him and all that. And yet, we look at it and say, you know, he was a horrible, wicked person who must have split hell wide open when he went to hell, because what he did, we see the atrocities alone. He, he killed six million Jews alone, defenseless people. There wasn't even soldiers. He, he, and he killed 21 million Gentiles, from my understanding, during the war and all that. I mean, I'll tell you, there's a, there's a lot to learn from a person like him.